we can wax philosophically. I don't think you said that right. I know I didn't say that right. How are you feeling tonight? Man, pretty good, all things considered. I've been on a grumpy, grumpy patch lately, man. You know what I really appreciate? I appreciate that you actually gave that thought. You stopped. Most people, when you say, how you doing tonight, they either answer truthfully or they just say, great, how are you? And move forward. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. The guy that's buying a lottery ticket every week has a plan for the time. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. I don't want that win. I want the last 10 minutes back. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm all about some fart filtering. Two guys, one podcast. She's wrong, but let's let's hear what she has to say. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. I'm sorry, what did you think it was? It's what I know it is. Okay. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Very few people stop and give it consideration. And, and, and then and you like, not only did you consider which way am I going to answer the question, but then you considered your actual feelings. How am I feeling? I appreciate the introspection. I'm a giver. <laughs> Does that make me a taker? <laughs> uh, no, because I always worry about what my tone's going to be episode to episode. And I feel like it's this is going to be a very positive one. Uh, let's see what kind of notes I got for this episode. <laughs> before. Regardless, we... I'm going to try to uh, to stay in the positive, excited vein. You're going to always look on the bright side of your life? Yeah, man. I'm, I don't want to be an Eeyore. I'm not going to be a half you know, a glass half full. No Eeyore's kind of allowed. Tonight. No. All right. Another rainy day. <laughs> Just another rainy day. Come on, Pooh. This is episode 102 of uh, Two Guys, One Podcast. Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy. And I am the other. And this is the podcast. Uh, thanks for joining us for our uh, wacky little comedy podcast here. Uh, we like to meet weekly uh, in your earlobes and uh, throw you a little free funny. Uh, we bring you some regular segments. You can find more information on those at twoguysonepod.com. Uh, we talk about uh, some uh, things going on in our lives every now and again, and we generally just try to have a good time with it. Um, you can check out all of the archives and our links to social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Instagram even, YouTube, all that stuff at twoguysonepod.com. If you like the show, please review us in iTunes. It helps other people find us. If you don't listen to iTunes, if you don't use iTunes, review us in Stitcher. That works just the same way. Either way. Oh, does it? It does. If it you, does. Stitcher works the same way as iTunes? Well, it doesn't work the same You're way as iTunes. Stitcher works the exact same way as iTunes, so you can stop fucking harassing me no, jerk about off. getting a new podcast app. No, asshole. No, no, no. Listen, I. it doesn't work the same way as iTunes. I meant the reviews work the same way. Stitcher reviews help us be found in Stitcher by people that use Stitcher the same way that iTunes reviews. I don't even know why people are even on that shitty app. I agree. I don't look. Look, it's not. It's not that it's a shitty app. I think if you're a serious podcast listener, like you and I are, there are much better apps for serious hey, podcast man. listening. Hey man, do they have the iTunes Awards? Yeah, as a matter of fact, they do. They do. Yeah, who who won an iTunes Award for podcasting last year? I don't know, but I can look it up for you. I don't want to look it up right now, but I can. Do they have Stitcher Awards? Uh, yes, they do. Uh, who won the best Stitcher Award podcast last year? I don't know. You're so full of shit, we just did a podcast on it! I don't know that that was this year, though. Did he win it this year? Is there only one? Is there only one award for best podcast? Because in iTunes, there's a bunch. Well, I think so, there's one in every category. Yeah, there's best, the best, best overall, new one. Best, yes, there's a best new one, because we just did... Uh, what say you as well? And we talked about how that one best new podcast. You're just you're you're just being stubborn. You're mm. just putting your heels in and mm. acting like you don't care, even though you I know don't. this information because we had a fucking conversation about it. Okay, <laughs> see see what you do. See what you do. I wanted to be positive. I pulled you back ah, in. Maybe it's you. Maybe it is you that just puts me in a shitty mood. I don't know. We're not friends anymore. Maybe it's me. Maybe maybe it's me. <laughs> Oh, I did think about you. I did a BuzzFeed quiz about which character I would be uh, in uh, Princess Bride. 
Yeah? I was fucking Columbo. You you were not Columbo, you were Grandpa. There's the difference. There's the difference. <laughs> Columbo would never There's a difference the except to his to his grandkids. Like to his grandkids, that motherfucker is both. <laughs> I suppose you're right. And then would you feel ripped off if you were one of his grandchildren and he read you the Princess Bride and you thought it was like a special moment between the two of you and a, and a, and a memory that you're going to cherish? And then it turns out he was just fucking rehearsing? <laughs> oh, man, I would have been pissed. Just let go of that anger. Just let go of that anger. You're being quiet because I hear you clacking away on those fucking keys over there because you're trying to look up and see who won what for iTunes. I'm not, you're actually. Sh- really? No, I was getting my notes ready. I don't believe And you. I was looking up the spelling of Eeyore because I believe that's the E-Y-O-R-E. title of this. E-Y-O-R-E. Incorrect? Bullshit. E-E-Y-O-R-E. Yeah, that's probably right. Yeah. Uh, let's do the rundown. We got a word of the day. Oh, yeah. yeah 1920s. Doing, did we have right. one last week? We did. Uh, uh, our mutual friend one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It was Fucking just a long guests. time ago when we recorded. Uh, yeah. we, we you gotta, know why the guest always, you know, the guest generally wins word of the day. You know why? Why? Because they don't have to sit there and make any fucking content. All they have to do is commentary. They, it's snark. That's right. We've talked about it. They're like, they're, you know what they are? They're this, they're. They're like the setup shooter for the San Antonio Spurs. The, all they got to do is sit out there on the three point line. I am so glad you brought this up. Wait for Manu Ginobili and Tony Parker to rotate in and around, pick apart the Miami Heat defense, and then pitch to the outside edge where, unsuspectingly, another three goes in. I think the San Antonio Spurs just scored again on the Miami Heat. These two How's games. It feel? How, does it, how does it feel? It feels like I've been shit on recently. Why? That's. Like, Why? The San Antonio Spurs are the better team. That's clear to me now. And I actually, there's a great article you know, I read about you know about why? It. Because Pop is a tremendous fucking coach. You know when Pop started coaching for these finals? The very first motherfucking game of the season. I was going to say even before that. He started coaching for these finals when they lost the last finals. Man, like, he's he, so good. Let me tell you something else, too. I told somebody today, and I believe it 100%, Kawhi Leonard, and this is not a sports show, but we're going to talk about sports for just a second. Kawhi Leonard, if you don't know this guy's name, if you don't watch the NBA, look him up. It's a funny spelling. That kid's worth knowing about, though. He is, to me, what LeBron James would have looked like three years in the league if he had played next to Tim Duncan those first three years. It's unbelievable. I don't think Kawhi's ceiling is as high as LeBron's, but he's further advanced three years into the league than LeBron was, and that's true. Yeah, well, no shit. How old was Ka- Kawhi Leonard whenever he came into the league? Uh, 19. He's 22 years old now. Yeah, but he still had a, at least a year in college. Yeah, he had one year in okay, college. so he has one year in college. So he's playing with dudes, some of them, Three years older than him. Yeah. Okay. So it, it, it's like LeBron. LeBron fourth never year. had that. You're right. No, but LeBron also never had a team with any veterans to learn yeah. from. Truthfully, I'm I'm done talking about sports mainly because if a listener a year from now comes back and listens to this episode, yeah, this so far it doesn't matter. Yeah. You're right. Here's here's what you can remember though. I'm very very upset, and it's been really shitty watching these finals. Well, it's because it's like this, man. The Spurs, right? Yeah. They're like the Expendables. They got a couple of old guys, some key foreigners, and no Steven Seagal. (laughs) Does that make Miami Heat last Vegas? Oh, yeah. No. (laughs) It's Michael Douglas, uh, 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 Morgan Freeman, and uh, uh, who's the... Kevin Kline. Uh, So one... Robert De Niro is also in that. So one big name and a couple of role players? Yeah. Hey, let me tell you something, though. That movie's fucking really good, by the way. If you haven't watched that, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it because it's kind of old people movie, but it's really good. It's really awesome. Okay, so, but as I was saying, we're in the middle of the rundown here. We got a word of the day. We've also got a who are these guys. All right. Yeah, we got a Southern Will comfort. Will it be something I can answer, too, about who are these guys, or is it just a personal? Because we never really define this segment. Oh, that's a good point, I suppose. No, this is, it's a personal, I got a personal story to All share. Right, right on. You might have something to add to it. Uh, here, you did, you are the resolution to it. How about that? Uh, we got a Southern Comfort. 
We got an If You Could, as a matter of fact. Oh, man, I love If You Could. I know. Um, I've got a, uh, a news story, the worst misspellings on Twitter. We're going to talk about this. Uh, and then we've got a word from Bob Ross to wrap things up. Uh, first of all, let's go straight into it. Let's go to the word of the day. Word of the day. What we're Lay it doing. on me, slick. <laughs> all right, all right. This this segment is the berries. It's our favorite. Uh, you grab your uh, choicest piece of calico uh, and down a little giggle water and get ready to play along with us. Uh, or just sit back and listen if you're a dewdrop. That's right. What we're doing is we're bringing you 1920s slang. This is words or phrases that were popular in the 1920s. They've fallen out of the vernacular. We're bringing them back by using them somewhere in the podcast. Today is a phrase... Don't take any wooden nickels. What the, I, I mean, don't, don't take any wooden nickels. Yeah, don't do anything dumb. Yeah. Don't do anything dumb. Uh, that's easy enough. Uh, we'll try to use it. I, well, I guess you could just say wooden. Uh, that's that's some wooden nickels. Wooden nickels could replace our parking lot story. Yeah, yeah it could. That's That sounds like a wooden nickel to me. Uh, we'll use that sometime in the podcast if we can. Um, next, uh, let's go on into who are these guys? I lost something, other guy. Very, very personal to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very sentimental. I had, in my youthful and uh, wild and voracious days in um, Ohio, in southern Ohio, when I was doing summer theater, I did summer stock there, uh, Blue Jacket, outdoor drama. It's a, We've talked about it before. Outdoor drama, everybody's, you know, between the ages of 18 and 25 or so, mostly. You got a couple of old guys around, but mostly you're talking about young, virile, single individuals, just young, dumb, and full of cum. Yep. Yeah. Drunk and horny. Drunk and horny. Um, what's, what's the line from Animal House? Drunk and stupid is no way to go through life, son. It's the best way to go through summer stock. Especially for at least three years. <laughs> yes, absolutely. You, I think everybody should spend about two or three years drunk and stupid. Um, I was doing that at the time. And, uh, there came a time during the, we did Christmas in July. And as part of that, we had secret Santas. And uh, you had a survey to fill out. We did a Secret Santa too, uh, where uh, where I was working our Christmas in July. Right. But we did it over like a like a fucking week, right? Right. So every just about every day, you like you got a gift and you had to try to figure out who it was, right? Yeah. So I got like day one, I got like uh, some stickers, and the day two, I got like a, a new set of darts, and like day three. Somebody stole a goddamn street sign. <laughs> nice. And gave it to me. Uh, so we had we filled out surveys. We filled out this little thing. What are your likes and dislikes? Here's some things that I hate. Here's some things that I love. I would like to see what you had on that list because mine would be completely sarcastic. I wrote no. All of mine was very real. I here's and I don't remember what I said that I didn't like. But what I said that I liked, I liked music, uh, and I liked all kinds. I liked beer. Loved beer. And I listed a couple of my favorite varieties at the time. And and then I also I also really liked playing cards. Uh, not playing cards. I had boobs. I liked I said I I loved boobs. I, I thought playing cards because the gift that I got that was boobs was a, a deck of strip playing cards. They had like, you know, naked women on the back of them or whatever. It's the only deck of those kinds of cards that I've ever owned still to this day, by the way. That's it's the, probably a good thing. Well, yeah, sure. I mean, it's the first deck that I had ever seen or gotten. It's the, it's the only deck that I've gotten since. So, oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I didn't think. Actually, I thought these weren't even plugged in. Papa, can you hear me? And I expected you to say... Hey man, that's not that's not even those in. those those yeah. aren't even working. No, but they are working. Right, and then you I got your cans on. Yeah, and then I was gonna say uh, I just want to feel professional. Yeah, nice. So, but no, but the p- whole point of the story is so the with the week build up, it was just as you said. I got a different gift every week. Right, and they checked off the list. I got a little something that had uh, you know a little. I, I can't even remember what all the gifts were. I got incense. I said I liked incense at the time too. I had this like a nog champa burner in my room or some shit like that. I so thought you said. 
what in sync for some reason. I don't know. Oh why. no, I do. I did not like in sync. Think putting the music together. I don't know. Mm. And you so, said all kinds, and then yes. it was like a joke. But the culmination came at the big party Saturday night. So Saturday night we closed the show. We had a big bonfire party at the set, and we all exchanged. We our secret Santas were revealed with the final gift. And the big gift, and I think there was a cap on the gift. Like you were only supposed to spend like fifteen right, or twenty bucks right. or something like that, because everybody's fucking broke. But well, I, you're mostly broke because we, we didn't spend our money wisely. Well, that's true. Yes, but beer, I, beer's not expensive, but a lot of beer is. <laughs> beer, beer should not be. You know, let's say thirty to seventy five percent of your uh, monthly income. Yeah, that should not be your beer expenses. Rent beer maybe to could food be a budget. Yeah, is ridiculously <laughs> lopsided. Let's just say you should spend less on beer than you do on rent every month. That's definitely the the case. Anyway. That was not the case for us then. We spent more on beer than we did on rent. <laughs> Absolutely. And my final gift uh, that that week was a uh, a six pack of beer, a six pack of uh, bottled beer. At the time, I was really into Killian's Irish Red. Killian, Killian's. Yeah, yes, you're right. Yeah, I was for some reason I wanted to put stout in there somewhere. It's Killian's Irish Red. Yeah, uh, I loved it. So I got a six pack of Killian's Irish Red and this incredibly ornate bottle opener like an ivory handled bottle opener it was fancy right on and it was i I don't know it's mine and it was silly but it was a thing that i had and i used the shit out of this bottle opener i i used it on bottles that i knew for a fact were twist offs sometimes our our mutual friend has a bottle opener from germany that has like a like a tree like a piece of wood with like a block with a face in it yes see that's what i'm talking about you want you want, I don't know, it was a thing. It was my totem, you know? So I use this a lot. Years pass. I get married. I settle down a little bit. I used it less. Eventually, I pass it on to my sister. She sees it one day. She's talking about it. I'm like, you know what? I never use the thing anymore. I, I got this, you know, the plain plain one that you, you that you get at the restaurants or whatever, you know, like the- Right. I've the, got one on my keychain. Yeah, exactly. I was like, I use that one. I never get that one out of the cabinet. Why don't you take it? You use it. Something to show off at parties. You know, it's fun. Yes. So she uses it for several years. I get separated and divorced. And as part of her pick up my brother trip, right after uh, my uh, ex-wife moved out of the house, my sister comes to visit me. And what does she bring me? A six pack of beer and my bottle opener. Sweet, adorable. I've had it ever since then. So fast forward to two weeks ago now. I'm going to get a beer. I go to get my bottle opener, my trusted, ornate, have it for years, meant so much to me in college, had it after the divorce and it kind of revitalized my life again. It is my totem and the damn thing just snapped in two right there in my hand fell to the ground, and shattered the pieces of it that were breakable anyway. Well, here, here's the deal, man. You shouldn't – I knew you were bummed out about it. But the reason it did that is because it got you so much. It was loved. Yeah. Yeah, well. So you should remember the times you had with it. And I do, with some of them. I forget. <laughs> it, got, <laughs> it gets hazy. I only remember half those nights. Yeah, yeah, the best times I did it, 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 it get fuzzy. Anyway, um, I, it was – but it's gone now. It's been laid to rest. Uh, and the the happy resolution to the story, though, is that you brought me a new one. Yeah, man. Kind of fan- It's not the same as the old one in a similar way, though. It's fancy. It fits my modern. It's it's more. It's me now. It's not me in college. It's me now. It's the perfect bottle opener for me. It's a daddy bottle opener. It is a daddy bottle opener, indeed. And daddy needs a bottle opener. Let's just say that, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so that's my little. Who are these guys for this week? Uh, it was a story I didn't know exactly whether it would fit on the show or not, but I still have my uh, my bottle opener from whenever I worked in Santa Fe. Really? Yeah, man. See, that kind of shit matters, even when it feels like it's silly for it to matter. Yeah, whenever you see me open a beer at the house and I'm not using my keychain, that's the one I'm using. I got a um, I got a Southern Comfort for you. Ooh. And I encourage the listeners to play along. Because I get this wrong 90% of the time. And if you think it's easy, listen, play along, have one guess, and see if you're right. If you are, one guy will suck your dick. Hey, that's not true. 
fondle your nuts. That's not true either. Finger your prostate. No. Worm your eyeball. I don't know what that is. Eyeball licking, man. Get hit with it. No, sir. Um, so I can't go to this website, apparently, on my computer because it uh, it says that I need to um, I need to be a subscriber. But I can't open it on my phone because I already have, so I'm going to open it there. Southern Comfort, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to um, give you the headline here, talk Deep to you a little bit about the fatty. story. That's right. And then see whether other guy can choose what state this happened in. As long as I don't give it away before we get to the end of the story That's anyway. That's true. I'm, I'm banking on that. Headline. Police say argument over undercooked ribs led to a Sunday murder. Oh, man. (laughs) An argument over food being undercooked is being cited by police as the cause of a stabbing death of a man Sunday. Gary Foots, 58. Can I get the the spelling of Foots? F-O-O-T-S. The etymology, please. Uh, You know, the thing on the end of your leg? (laughs) (laughs) Gary Gary Foots, 58. Somebody needs to watch the spelling bee. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Foots, 58, allegedly stabbed Maurice Turner, 41, after Turner allegedly told Foots that the ribs Foots was grilling were undercooked. Deputy Prosecutor Cars Manning said during a court hearing Tuesday for Foots, Turner was taken to the uh, medical center where he was pronounced dead of a wound to the chest at 6.39 p.m., Officer Nathan Smith, who was assigned the initial call, said when he reached the hospital, Turner was unconscious. But Smith said a paramedic who had been in the ambulance that took Turner to the hospital said that Turner said before he lost. That sounds like a whole a lot of he said and he said and the other guy said. But supposedly before Turner lost consciousness, um, he said that he had been stabbed by Gary Foots. He named the guy before he died, supposedly. The incident occurred during what police sergeant David DeFore called a family get together. Um, Foots told police he started to walk away after arguing with Turner when Turner called him several names and Foots said he turned around and stabbed Turner near the shoulder with a knife he had been using to cut the ribs. It was close at hand. <laughs> According to a probable cause affidavit. Well, I think Foots would disagree. Yeah. Uh, Manning said Foots had several aliases. This is where the story gets real interesting. <laughs> Foots had several aliases, including Willie Lewis Jones. Leon Ventry, Johnny Lee Packard, and Bruce Dunnell Reed. Why do you think he might have so many aliases, other guy? <laughs> Cause he, he, I don't, I don't know, man. He's a prior offender. Maybe you think he might have a rap sheet, perhaps. How about this? Uh, he had prior convictions under the name Foots for rape in 1973. Well, how old is this dude? For which he was sentenced to thirty years in prison. Uh, he was he. This guy is uh, forty one years old. No, Gary Foots was fifty eight. Foots is fifty eight. So in nineteen seventy three, he was convicted as Gary Foots for rape. He was sentenced to thirty years in prison. So that was in do, hold on. Let's do the math. Seventy three. He'd get out in no three if no, he did all thirty. He, how old was he in seventy three? Well, he's fifty eight now. So he's like twenty five. Maybe. Yeah, he was early twenties. Okay. All right. 25, 24, something like 20, 26, no, 20, yeah, 25, So this 24. dude just, get, he just got out of jail. Uh, well, he probably didn't do all of it. That's true. But yeah, no, he couldn't have done all of it because check this. He was uh, also convicted under the name of Foots for theft of property in 1982. So he got convicted in 73 for rape, got 30 years. Nine years later, he was convicted for theft of property. Under the name of Packard... He had a prior conviction for being a felon in possession of a firearm in 95, which, wait a minute, that means that he already had a felony as Packard, right? Right. Under the name Reed, he had a prior conviction for violating the Arkansas hot check law in 2007. I bet he's from Arkansas. Damn it. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe he hopped to state. At Manning's request, I made it all the way. You I'm literally so a paragraph. Excited, man. I'm a paragraph to the end, man. Damn it. 
Uh, at Manning's request, Jefferson, Court, uh, Jefferson County District Judge Kim Bridsworth set a $500,000 cash-only bond for Foots after ruling prosecutors had probable cause to charge him with first-degree murder. Foots said he would hire his own attorney. The slaying was the eighth homicide of the year in what little town in Arkansas? Uh, no, 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 no. I got, I, I got, I got this. I'm all over this one. All right. It's a little town. Uh huh. Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Yeah, this is a good guess. It's Pine Bluff. You might remember oh, Pine shit. Bluff. My uncle lived in Pine Bluff. Eighth homicide of the year. Seventh murder in the little town of Pine Bluff. It's early in the year, y'all. <laughs> but also, Pine Bluff no, was dude, the that's home. That's a shitty town, man. Pine Bluff was the home of our good friend. Monroe Isadora. Is it? Was it really? Yep. Monroe Isadora, the old man who would not come out of his home for the police. Police said, come out. Monroe Isadora said, with my bullets. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pop, what pop, was he, like pop, 98? Pop. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Um, so there's our Southern Comfort for this week. It would have been a great one if I hadn't fucked it up at the end. I would not have guessed Arkansas if it makes you feel any better. It does. It makes me feel much better. It makes me feel worse about fucking it up, though. I was thinking like the Carolinas or Texas when you said ribs. Um, okay, so here's a thing that I'm about to do now. I'm going to – we're going to play a little If You Could. But to get to the If You Could, oh, i got to tell you a story. It's a short one. Of course. Bill Murray crashed a bachelor party. Uh, yep. Did you hear about this? Yep. We talked about this. Yep. Okay, over Memorial Weekend, over Memorial Day weekend, twenty of my buddies from Boston College. Uh, this is this is a report from one of the guys that was there that posted the video. Twenty of my buddies from Boston College got together in Charleston for our friend EJ's bachelor party. At one point during dinner at a steakhouse, a guy goes to the bathroom downstairs, sees Bill Murray sitting there with some friends with a fishing vest on. We talked to the waiter to see if we could send him some drinks, to which Bill declined. One of my buddies then went down and asked if he'd come up, say a few words for EJ, and got a no thanks. My buddy comes back up dejected, tells us it's not going to happen. Two minutes later, Bill fucking Murray walks into the room and gives this speech. I like how he's already mentioned Bill Murray in this article, and then because he shows up, all of a sudden Bill gets a new middle name. Bill fucking Murray. I think it. I think it's it's suitable I, though. I don't, man. I'm really trying to stay positive, but all right. Listen, listen to the speech. I've got better. Oh. Have you heard? <laughs> And usually I say, you know, it's uh, I have a little experience with this. This is I say, you know, when you're, when you're it's just this, this is you know how funerals are not for the dead, they're for the living. <laughs> If you have someone that you think is the one, shit. Don't do don't just sort of think in a, your ordinary mind and think, okay, let's let's make a date, let's plan this and make a party and get married. Take that person and travel around the world. Buy a plane ticket for the two of you to travel all around the world and go to places that are hard to go to and hard to get out of. And if when you come back to JFK, when you land in JFK and you're still in love with that person, get married at the airport. Thank you. Hey, that's unbelievable. Oh, what surprised me? Kelly. 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 That sounds lucky. <laughs> 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 Let's pick him up over our shoulder. Oh, yeah. And what you what you can't hear in the video is Bill Murray. Sneaking, Quietly sneaks out the back. Yeah, sneaks out the back of the room. It was, it was really fucking pimp, truthfully. Um, okay, so the whole time that that video is playing, you're shaking your head. You're you're just you, not disgusted, perhaps. No, with it, but we've we've talked about it. I know this is an unpopular opinion. I'm not a big Mil Bill Murray fan. I'm just Boo. I'm just not. I know I don't care. And 
these fucking assholes in this on this clip are reacting way too goddamn hard to what uh, Billy Boy is saying because it's not that fucking funny. It's just not. He had two minutes to prepare for this. Of course it's not going to be funny, right? <laughs> I thought I thought it was reasonably... You need a bill. Hey, but also, but here's the... Like, these guys are having this moment that's... Re- it, first of all, at a very pivotal moment in all of... Well, in one of their lives anyway. And, and the, the guys who are like the best man or the groomsmen and stuff, maybe it matters a lot to them if this is like a long-term friendship uh, that that's getting married. How much play do you think this has gotten for Bill Murray? A lot. It was a great decision for Bill Murray. You and yeah, I... Yeah, Bill didn't give a fuck about <laughs> any of those people. Nothing. Nana. Zilch. Zero. He will not remember you two days from now. But these guys will always remember this moment, though. That they were used fucking great. <laughs> All right. Well, see, I thought it was going to be you know hard. How much he ha- you know how much he had to pay for that? Nothing. Exactly. That <laughs> cheap son of a bitch. <laughs> I, I That's thought it- probably got him as much goodwill as... As as his last good movie, Groundhog's Day. <laughs> I appreciated the man who knew too much, or the no, the man who knew too little, or whatever the name of that. Yeah, I liked it the first time. Um. So, okay. Well, I thought it was going to be hard to choose someone other than Bill Murray for, or if you could, but I don't think it's going to be hard for you. Kidding me? Uh, so here's my if you could, if you could have a random encounter encounter an advice session like that with any celebrity living or dead who would it be I, the other one that i think is a great example of this is uh stan lee and mall rats brody runs into stan lee at the moment that he needs the, you know the the pep right. talk or whatever and gets it stan lee would be a pretty good one actually too. really <laughs> for what <laughs> because i think he's an awesome character He's hilarious. Also, look, look, he's... Hey, this was yours. You're the one who came up with this. Obviously, you've thought about it. I have. Please, let me hear this fucking pearl you're about to drop on me. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, since I'm a podcaster, <laughs> to dump twice over, Kevin, Kevin Smith, Smith would be yeah. a real good one. Bumping into Kevin Smith and getting a little a little advice, and maybe you can have a moment with him, and perhaps he checks your shit out or tweets it or something. That might be good for you. But the one that would even be more strongly than that for me... I would really want to bump into Willie Nelson. I would love to have a little moment in an elevator or something with Willie Nelson. That would be amazing. I've, I would feel like it'd be meeting the Dalai Lama or some shit. You know, like then why wouldn't you? If you're, just say if the you're, Dalai Lama. Yeah, if you're equating <laughs> meeting somebody like meeting the Dalai Lama, then you should probably just say the Dalai Lama. I, you know what? I I would st- I could stand to meet the Dalai Lama too. Find a little om in my life. Um, I. You think the Dalai Lama paints happy little trees? This is going to piss you off. Okay. Is it Joe Rogan? No. <laughs> no. I would fucking love for Honey Boo Boo just to show up. I know. I know. Just to watch my blood boil? I just I just wanted to say red neck and eyes. <laughs> I, I, here's the problem. It's entirely possible if I was in the physical presence of Honey Boo Boo, I just want to pick her up and squeeze her. I might squeeze her to death. <laughs> you know how you know what you know what Chief does for uh, McMurphy yeah, at the yeah, end at of, the end of uh, uh, One Flew Over Cuckoo's Nest. Yeah, yeah. kind of like that. I kind of like that. <laughs> she's 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 the personification of lobotomy. <laughs> um, I'm like she's a cultural lobotomy. I love her, man. Look, get off my back about it. I can't stand Bill Murray, and I'd rather have fucking Honey Boo Boo give me advice. Boy, this show had a great 102 episode run, didn't it? (laughs) (laughs) I'd love to hear who your um, uh, celebrity encounter would be. If you want to send us some feedback, you can do that. Listener mail, of course, two guys, one pod at me.com. Or you can call us, 504-613-5635. Hey, here's something cool, other guy. I don't know that this works in Stitcher, but you can check it out for me. Can you look at the Can you look at the show information in Stitcher, like the episode information? Can you yes. look at that? Okay. Yeah. If there's a link in there, is it clickable? Yeah. 
Is a phone number clickable? Do we have a phone number in ours? Yup. I don't know. Starting this episode, I don't my friends, listen to it. Starting this episode, um, you can go to uh, if you're using the podcast app on iPhone, and like I said, maybe in Stitcher, I'll check it out this week. But I know in the podcast app, all you got to do is click on our image art, and then like it folds over, and you see the episode description, and part of the episode description is the phone number. You can click right there, and your fucking phone will call us just like that. How fun is that? I'll see if it works in Stitcher, and I'll let you know next week. Ta-da! So that's how you can give us feedback. It's as fun as painting in the nude, falling, and getting your dick caught in a pipe, but you're so embarrassed about it, you wait 48 hours until you call for help because you don't know how to explain it. That's, that's, it's more fun than that. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's more fun than that. Okay, yes, it's de- it's definitely more fun than that. All right, this is from BuzzFeed. No, excuse me, it's from the Poke. Dot co dot uk the poke 25 worst or best depending upon how you look at it spelling mistakes on twitter um, i'm going to put a link to this on our facebook page and our twitter uh, account uh, our twitter account is at two guys one pod facebook we're facebook.com slash two guys one pod stizzle stizzle says have the courage to speak to me face to face no fighting Let's be adults and talk it out. Or bury the hatchet. B-A-R-R-Y. Like the name? Mm-hmm. It, they didn't even they didn't even they didn't even do Capitalize it. R R. Or yeah, well at least they didn't they knew it wasn't like, you know, twigs and berries. Um J Dubs says, I live by curiously through your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, sir. Well, that could be no, that could be true. Uh, this comes from Little Dreamer X3. I smell like men's colon. What were they trying to spell? I think she means cologne. C O C O L O N. Cologne. If you didn't know how to spell cologne, I smell like men. I smell like men's colon. That's pretty shitty. Yeah, no, that's terrible. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, this comes from On the Radar. You you, you laughed because it was a surprise, and then you felt bad for laughing because it was <laughs> yeah. a bad joke. Yes. <laughs> uh, this comes from On the Radar. Just because I'm white doesn't mean I can't have cornrows in my hair, right? No, he just he just doesn't know the term. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. He, he meant cornrows. Right, that's not a misspelling. <laughs> Why, what, what else would you call it? He didn't know the fucking term is what I'd call it. Okay. All right, then. Uh, well, then you're going to d- disagree with several of these because Gabe says, you can take your Monday through Friday business hours and ram them up your dairy air, young lady. And it's dairy space air. N- no, he he knew what the term was because that's, that's close enough. <laughs> What would a fucking dare fuck shove it up your utter? I know that's what I'm saying. Like, think about that. It's like when someone says, "I couldn't care less about that." Shove this in your lactate, and then they don't know that that's the phrase, so they say, "I could care less about that," and and I, it drives me crazy. I'm like, just think about what you're saying. You are you are implying that you do have an amount of care. What you want to say is, I couldn't care less about that. My care level is at absolute zero. No, I say I could care less just to let you know I, I could care less. That you're you're like um, – Like that's not even the worst thing I heard. You're non-committed about even, even – That's not even the worst thing I heard, and I want you to know how sad I am by hearing it. That's like hate's not the opposite of love. Apathy is. It's like whenever you don't like something, so people are like, how was it? And instead of going, ah, uh, it was no thumbs up. You go, it was half a thumbs up. All right, then. This comes from the baddest bitch around. Trina. Yeah. Sometimes I snap at people on Twitter because I'm insecure. It's a defense magnesium. I think that's that's autocorrect. Possibly. Yeah. <laughs> good good point. Uh, this comes from Chase Taylor. I think my grandma got diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> that's pr- <laughs> that's probably autocorrect too. Uh, this comes from uh, 
Also, Brooke Rachel, Rachel, I have no clue why people don't like hammy downs. I'll gladly take everyone. Hammy H A M M Y. <laughs> yep. Space downs. I'll gladly take everyone's. Who doesn't like free clothes? Um, this comes from uh, Niall Mal. If you get an old leather jacket, it's a hand me down. <laughs> it, smell, it smells vaguely of bacon. Um, I want to visit the Eiffel Tower in France one day. Little I F O L D Tower. I want to visit that the could Eiffel just be an Tower. Idiot. That just, that's an idiot. It's a new uh, attraction outside the Apple Store in Paris. Um, this comes from I Alex Jr. I can't date a girl who is lacto tolerance. Who couldn't even go out for ice cream? Lac space toe space tolerance. L A C K. L A C K space T O E space tolerance. Lac toe tolerance. <laughs> that, that bitch couldn't walk. <laughs> She had osteoporosis because she couldn't drink milk. She oh, was, no, no, no. She was lacto no. tolerant. Maybe this is a guy who's had diabetes. <laughs> and you can't. <laughs> and he's lost she his fucking toe. toe. No, he's lost his yeah. fucking toes. Oh, and she's got no lacto tolerance. <laughs> this girl's got lacto tolerance. <laughs> she wouldn't even let me take her out for ice cream. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. I was going to wear shoes. <laughs> this comes from Reckless Mike. Good night, y'all. Mind grain headache is coming back. Mind grain, all one word. M-I-N-D-G-R-A-I-N. No, he was just describing the type of headache he had. It, it was like a grain of sand. <laughs> On his mind. In his brain. This comes from Kel Space C. I love having sex with my boyfriend, but he never makes me organism. Sad face. Oh, my God. Let me tell you this. <laughs> Let me tell you this. So, this is going to sound so nerdy. I don't give a fuck. Oh. Whenever I was in eighth grade, uh, we had, like, um, I guess, like an inner school quiz bowl. <laughs> yeah. Right? And the principal read the questions. And it was supposed to say, what <laughs> organism? Instead, he said, what orgasm? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that made your little 10th grade hearts, didn't it? Uh, I, I was like, holy fuck, did he just say that? <laughs> but the crowd is all parents. It's all adults. Right. And people just busted out laughing. <laughs> the teachers started started giggling. It was awesome. <laughs> this is... This one's so good, I probably should save it for the end, but maybe there's better ones later in the, in the list, so I'm not going to. This is... Well, this is going to be the last one, so... Is it? Yeah, we've been doing this a while. All right, then. Okay, well, this is the... We'll, you know what? I'm going to save the rest of these, then, because there's some more. They're good. All right, this one's great. This is a good one to end on. Amsterdam James. And Amsterdam is spelled with an N. Amsterdam N on the end of it to make an Amsterdam is in the curse word. I would imagine... I think he's talking here about the Jay-Z Solange fight in the elevator that we discussed a few episodes back. Okay. I would imagine JC's, Jay-Z said something out of hand. But we all know how women overreact, and overreact is squeezed together <laughs> so that it becomes, it looks like, act because of their ovaries. <laughs> and I think this is the new way we should describe <laughs> menopause. Instead of saying they're PMSing, instead of saying they're on the rag if you want to be crass about it, instead of saying my woman was they're a little... riding the crimson way. All of those things, you can just say... My lady was a little uptight today. She overreacted. <laughs> Overreaction is maybe my new favorite phrase. Well, I mean, the ovaries are making an action. That's what I'm saying. The ovaries are responsible for the action. It's an overreact. You don't. You you're not nearly as pleased with this as I am. Well, I think maybe he did it on purpose. Oh, maybe so. I hadn't even thought about that. His this is, is a terribly titled fucking article. His name is Amsterdam James. Well, it yeah. is, says the best slash worst misspellings on Twitter. Oh, okay. and you're saying they're not misspellings either. Right. Some of them. All right, fair enough. You know what we need? The one guy where misspelling never happens because you're not writing, you're painting. Mr. Bob Ross, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo. A word from Bob Ross here to wrap things up. Don't forget to go by and check out twoguysonepod.com. So here we go. D- tell tell your friends though. Review us on iTunes, please. Help us uh, help us out. Um, we'll suck your dick. Man. I will not. I will not suck any dicks. 
Here's your word from Bob Ross. What sexually would you do to a person uh, to to get them to listen to the show? I would tickle their ear pussies. And thoroughly massage their ear clitorises. That's not any good. That bit didn't go anywhere. No, it didn't. What did you what did you want me to do? I don't know. I just threw it up there. I'd take it to the pooper. Maybe a sad hand job. A sad hand job. <laughs> a sad hand job, perhaps. <laughs> you know a sad half half hearted hand job? I wouldn't even do that. You know, like your like your ninth grade girlfriend. My ninth grade girlfriend did <laughs> fucking great hand job. She was a goddamn senior. All right, then. Let's let's hear from Bob Ross. A word from Bob Ross. Uh, check out more at bobrossquotes.com, by the way. Swoop. There he, it is. No. Swoop. He he. You have to make those little noises or it just doesn't work. That is so fucking creepy. Man. You know what's great about that? That can be applied to sex as well as painting. No. No. no? What the fuck? What do you, you don't need to. What do you. What? What? Hey, no, you know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to be positive. <laughs> what the fuck do you know that I don't that you say swoop on? I don't say swoop, but there, you know, I I can't handle silent sex. No, but if you're just, if you're saying, if you're making the noises with your fucking, like, I don't understand. Well, you know, I don't, don't mind if she's making saying. noises. No, but. I'm swoop, a little more controlled swoop, than just swoop general noises. To me, swoop to me. <laughs> swoop right in there. No, no, swoop to me is like Biff, Pam, Pow, and Batman, and that's not sexy. Swoop. <laughs> yeah. Like you're hitting it from behind and you just keep going kapow, kapow. <laughs> that's still, not sexy. If you were if you were making a comic about your you're sexual like, bing, relations bing, though. Bing, bing, bong. Like <laughs> no, it's not sex. If if you're making a comic about the sex though, right as you're making as you enter, that's the swoop sound right there. Swoop. That's the noise that that's that's the little nah, noise bubble. Man, swoop makes it sound little. I suppose. Thwomp. That's better. <laughs> Thwomp. <laughs> you have to make these little noises like that, or it just doesn't work. <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> Until next week, I'm one guy. And I'm the other. And this has been the podcast. Last time that we did something crazy, I can't remember. Seems like everything we do these days is an echo of the We used to live now, baby.
we were wild and restless out of our mind. But now I'm waking up at six o'clock for breakfast and get me to my work on time. We used to live now, baby. Oh, just like a rock and roll song It seems like these days Keep rolling along Rolling along Rolling along It seems like these days We keep rolling Oh, we keep on rolling it long Oh, we keep on rolling it long Yeah, baby It seems like these days Keep on rolling Oh, rolling We keep on rolling Rolling Oh, we keep on rolling Tell your friends. Hey, how long are we today right now? 45 minutes. All right, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your friends. Tell your friends it's and make not, sure. It's not like if we were like 30 minutes, I'd be like, yeah, you would be like, the listeners deserve 15 more minutes of bullshit. <laughs> you better find some more shit to talk about. No, no, no. Um,